my uh, question to the professor is a little bit on, uh, on trade preferences, the outcome of trade preferences. If we take uh, AGOA, AGOA with, uh, which is Africa Growth and Opportunity Act by the Americans, the statement which came uh, when they initiated uh, the trade preference was uh, to boost agriculture because agriculture can uh, raise incomes and, uh, and then they can reduce poverty. But by seven years now from this uh, initiative, we see that America is just importing oil <coughs> from Africa, more oil and less of non-oil, even far less of non-oil, very less of agriculture, far less of agriculture, maybe a little on manufacture. So who is to blame? Do we blame the domesticated trade policies of the Americans? or the domesticated trade policies of the recipients. Thank you. Sometimes blame goes on both sides. Uh, it doesn't, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't think in terms of blame here particularly, but I think the, the whole subject of these preferential trade agreements of one kind, where, where you are not doing it at the multilateral level, is that they can extract a lot of things from you, which have nothing to do with trade. This is my main worry. It's not the trade implications which are particularly important. I mean, for us trade economists, of course, it is important, because that's our profession. Like you go to a specialist on something, that's the only explanation he will give you. So, so trade is, effects are important. But every free trade agreement that you see, the, particularly those involving a major power like U.S., or EU for that matter, also to some extent. And you see them taking on relationships with one particular small country. You will find that the trade agreement will reach that size where all kinds of things which have nothing to do with trade are being put in to extract from you. So th that's something which I think increasingly people are worried about and are aware of that the, the small countries have to look out uh, for themselves, and the only way they can do that is preferably to go multilateral route, because these games cannot be played that easily when there are so many developing countries uh, and it's a multilateral system. That's the defense of the weak countries. Small countries are typically abused in this way, uh, and the preferences they get are a wasting asset. The more MFN tariffs go down, the more the preference goes down, because it's a ratio. The preference is relative to the MFN rate. And so as MFN rates go down, the preference goes down. But all the, all the trade unrelated conditions they've extracted from you stay. And so increasingly it becomes an unpleasant outcome for, for us. So I think one thing that I say to all the developing countries is don't allow yourself to be taken one by one. This is a Leninist policy of divide and conquer, essentially, by the lobbies. No, I am not saying President Bush is an evil, wicked man, you know, whatever your views on him. Uh, but it is not the administrations that are real. But many of these, you know, certainly the United States is, is, the lobbies are very important, and they get on to all these games which are going on, and trade game, they want to convert into a, a shell game, a, a non-trade game. So I think that is it, and I think at your end, uh, when you earn money, even by exporting oil or exporting yo-yos or diesel engines or whatever you're producing, uh, you then are in a position to use those gains from trade to in, in, you know, for development purposes. Now, if you wind up doing, like some countries do, spending it on armaments uh, or on corruption, which is an easy thing to say because anything, that's another thing flung at developing countries, and I don't go with that because it's just my, you know, Peter Eigen, whom I know well, I mean, just goes and asks a bunch of people, you know, do you think the government is corrupt? Well, I mean, in India, if you ask that, uh, everybody's going to say it's corrupt. 